Forex trading can get your results like this, this, and this in one hour or less per day from anywhere in the world. And the best thing is you can make these profits trading hundreds of thousands of dollars of someone else's money without taking on any risk yourself. Once mastered, trading can give you more time, location, and financial freedom than any other career path that I can think of. And in this full course, I'm gonna show you absolutely everything you need to know to start a profitable trading career. And you don't need to have any experience to watch this video. I'm gonna take you through the whole process from introducing you to the basics of Forex all the way through to taking your first profitable trade. And in case you're wondering who I am, why you should listen to me and how I have any authority on this subject, I've been trading for seven years and I've built a full-time trading career for myself. And over the past two years, I've trained over 2000 people just like you to achieve $21 million in combined results. Many of those people now making over $10,000 per month and many of them also going full-time with their trading. So now that's out of the way, let's get into the lessons. First off, what is Forex? Well, Forex is an abbreviation for foreign exchange. And foreign exchange is a giant global market where the value of the world's currencies are traded against one another. It's kind of like stocks, but instead of buying and selling shares in companies, we are trading the value of different currencies. Every single day, $7 trillion passes hands in this market. So it's by far the biggest. It's also the second most flexible market behind cryptocurrency. Forex markets are open 24 hours a day, five days a week, meaning you can take a trade at literally any time except the weekend. Stock markets, options, and futures markets don't have this benefit. They have specific trading hours that you're confined to, but Forex markets don't have this constraint. You can literally take a trade at any time you want between 10 p.m. GMT on Sunday and 10 p.m. GMT on Friday. Of course, on Saturday and Sunday, the market is closed. So what do we trade? Well, you know that we're trading the value of different currencies, but we don't actually buy physical currency. In Forex, we trade contracts, and the contracts that we trade are called currency pairs, and they show the value of one currency against another. An example of a currency pair is Euro USD, which is the Euro versus the US dollar. There are hundreds of different currency pairs available to trade, covering all of the world's global currencies, broken down into three main segments, major currency pairs, minor currency pairs, and exotic currency pairs. Major pairs cover the world's most important currencies and always include the US dollar. For example, EURUSD, which is the euro versus the dollar, GBPUSD, which is the Great British Pound versus the US dollar, USDJPY, which is the dollar versus the Japanese yen, and NZDUSD, which is the New Zealand dollar versus the US dollar. Minor pairs cover the world's most important currencies, but disregard the US dollar. There are a lot of these, but a few examples would be Euro GBP, which is the Euro versus the Great British Pound, NZDJPY, which is the New Zealand dollar versus the Japanese yen, and CAD CHF, which is the Canadian dollar versus the Swiss franc. Now in the bottom segment, we have exotic currency pairs. These are currency pairs made up of one very popular important currency and an emerging markets currency. An example would be USD MXN, which is the dollar versus the Mexican peso. For the most part, you should trade major pairs. They have the most people trading them, there's the most money flowing around, and they give you the best trading conditions. Minor pairs are okay, but major pairs are better. And exotics have terrible conditions, and I wouldn't even bother looking at those. So back to EURUSD. Currency pairs are made up of a base currency and a quote currency. The base currency is always the first currency listed in the pair. The quote currency is always the second currency in the pair. The base and the quote make up the price of the currency pair. So taking a look at the price of Euro USD, we can see the price is 1.08538. This simply means that one Euro is worth 1.08538 US dollars. And in order to make money trading, we would need price to go up after we buy at that level. So if you bought at 1.08538, and the market went up to 1.09538, you would make money. Now, another benefit of trading Forex over different markets is that because we're buying contracts, we can actually trade both ways. See, if you buy a stock and the stock goes down, you lose money because the shares that you own are worth less. However, in Forex, with the contracts, we're essentially just betting on whether the market is going to go up or down, which means we can actually sell the market and profit when the market goes down. And some terms that you need to know in relation to this are long and short, bullish and bearish. So what's bullish? Well, bullish is a name for a market that's going up. It's also the name that people prescribe to the bias if you think the market is going to go up. So if EURUSD is bullish, that means EURUSD is going up. If someone says they're bullish on EURUSD, that doesn't necessarily mean that Euro is going up now, 
but they think that EURUSD is going to go up. And what's bearish? Bearish is the opposite of this. Bearish is the name prescribed to a falling market or a bias if you think the market's going to fall. So if EURUSD is bearish, that means that EURUSD is going down. If someone says they are bearish on a market, that means they think that market is going to go down. And what's long? Long is another word for buy. A long position is a buy trade. So if a trader thinks the market's going to go up, they would enter a long position, or they might say they're long on Euro USD. And short is the opposite. Short is another word for sell. So if someone says they're entering a short position, that means they think the market's going to go down and they're putting risk on a sell. So long and bullish are buy and short and bearish are sell. How can I make money trading? Money is made by actually forecasting which way the currency pairs are going to go and then buying or selling or going long or short in that direction. So if you think the euro is going to get stronger against the US dollar for the next 10 minutes, 10 hours, 10 days, any time frame you want, you would go long or buy euro USD. And if you think euro is going to get weaker, then you would sell euro USD. And the cool thing about Forex is that you can trade across practically any time scale. You could decide to get in and out of the market in one to two minutes, or you could hold a trade for a year or more if you really wanted to. Now, these different styles of trading over different time frames have different names. We have scalping, day trading, swing trading, and position trading. Scalping is trading where you get in and out of a market in a matter of seconds or a few minutes, looking to catch very small price moves. Day trading is where you get into a trade with the plan to get out in the next few hours or within the same day that you entered the trade. Swing trading is where we go for slightly bigger moves and we hold a trade from anywhere from three days to a few weeks. And position trading is where we hold trades from months to years. The most common forms of trading are day trading and swing trading. And the style of trading I recommend you start out with is swing trading, simply because this is the easiest and most passive way to trade. So if right now you're working a nine to five job or you have commitments that take up a lot of your day, you can swing trade around that with no problems. It's also the easiest to master and it can bring you some massive profits. All you do is simply find a trade, get in and then let it run for a few days to a few weeks and it will literally work for you and make you thousands of dollars in the background. So to make money, essentially all we need to do is find a market that's trending either up or down and then get into a trade. And to clarify, a trend is simply a phase in the market where we're either going up or down, anywhere but sideways. And because Forex is so flexible, you don't have to bet on a trade for months or years. You can get into a buy trade while it's going up, and if the market starts to reverse, you simply get out, go short, and profit from the down move as well. Now, what is a pip? We measure the price moves that the market makes in pips. And the currency quote I showed you before is made up of pips, and that's the price for a currency pair. So for Euro USD at 1.08538, the three is one pip, the five is 10 pips, the eight is 100 pips, and the zero would be 1000 pips. Now you notice we leave the final number off, that small red one that you saw on the quote, that's a fraction of a pip. So when we're counting pips, we start doing that one number from the left, always ignore the fraction. Counting pips becomes important when it comes to preparing trades and managing risk. And we're gonna cover this in depth in a bit. So don't worry if it's a little bit confusing now, I'll show you some live examples. All right, what is technical analysis? When it comes to forecasting the markets to find actual trades, we need to do analysis. And there are two key types of analysis we can use. The first is technical analysis. This is what I recommend you begin with. This is the most common form of analysis. Most traders use this and it's the easiest to grasp and the easiest to master. Technical analysis is where we use price charts to work out where the market's going to go next by analyzing patterns within the charts. I'm gonna show you my strategy in a bit so you can start learning from that. The second form of analysis is fundamental analysis. So what is fundamental analysis? Well, this is where we use politics, economics, and real world events, as well as news and data to work out where the markets are going to go. Fundamental analysis is not essential. It can be useful, but it's not essential. And as a beginner trader, I'd recommend you don't look at this just yet because it's more likely to confuse you than help you. So for now, keep your focus on technical analysis. And in the live trades in a bit, I'll show you how this works. What is risk management? Well, because we are essentially betting on the direction of a currency, sometimes we are guaranteed to be wrong. In fact, most great traders are wrong half of the time, which means if you took 10 trades, you could expect to win five and lose five. 
Trading success actually comes from balancing the wins and the losses, not getting rid of losses altogether, because that is impossible. So because we know we're going to lose a good portion of the trades we take, we have to use what we call risk management. And risk management includes strategies like taking trades that aren't too big and aren't too small, and being prepared to cut losing trades while they're small, while holding our winning trades until the profits become very big. So now you know the basics of trading, there are three things that you are going to need to get started. A broker, a chart software, and a trading account. So what is a broker? A broker is simply a middleman between us, the trader, and the commercial banks who facilitate our trades. So when we take a trade, the majority of the time, this trade is handled by a bank. But we don't go directly to the bank, it's too difficult, time consuming, and we won't even be allowed to do that unless we are of course a high net worth individual or we are licensed with them in some way. So instead, we place trades through an account with a broker and the broker instantly executes it and handles everything for us. A broker is absolutely essential. If you don't have a broker, you can't even place a trade. It's important that you pick a good broker because many of them are shady and I've heard terrible stories of brokers refusing withdrawals of the money that you've deposited with them. Also, bad brokers will charge you huge fees and commissions and eat into all of the profits you make anyway. If you want a good broker, I've been using the same one throughout my whole seven year trading journey and I've never had a single issue. There's a link to that broker in the description. So brokers make money in two ways, through spreads and commissions. So what is spread? Now listen up because this is important and it will cost you dearly if you don't understand it. Spread is the difference between the buying price and the selling price that your broker offers. So on your trading account, you will see two different prices for a currency pair. These are called a bid price and an ask price. The bid price is the price that the broker is willing to pay for an asset. And the ask price is the price that the dealer is willing to sell the currency pair at. And the bid price is always going to be slightly lower than the ask price. So the broker is going to charge you a small premium to buy a currency pair and they won't buy it back for as much as they sold it to you for. Usually the spread is only one or two pips and this is totally fine, but spread willy into the profits on every trade you take. So make sure you're working with a good broker like the one I recommended so that you don't get chewed up by spreads. What is commission? Now the second way that brokers make money is through commissions and commission is a fixed fee that brokers will charge you for getting in and getting out of trades. Commissions aren't charged on every trading account, though I actually prefer accounts that do have commission because generally accounts that charge a commission are going to have lower spreads. So really you can pick which one you want to pay. You can either pay commissions or you can pay by paying higher spreads for the trades you take. For me, commissions make the most sense, but you don't need to worry because if you become a good trader, commissions and spreads are cheap enough to be overwritten by your profits anyway. So it's not really a big deal. Now, what is a lot size? When you take a trade, you will have to choose a lot size to enter that trade with. A lot size is simply the size of the trade you want to get into or the amount of units that you want to buy. A standard lot is 1.0 and this trade is equivalent to buying $100,000 worth of an asset. To trade this big, you'll need an account balance of around $10,000 or more. So when you're starting out, you'll most likely be trading micro lots. This is lots like 0.1 and 0.05. The smaller your lot size, the less money you can make, but the less money you can lose. If you trade very big lot sizes, you can make money very quickly, but you can also lose thousands of dollars in a matter of minutes. It's best to start out small and work your way up over time, always following risk management. And how do you know what lot size you should use on a trade? Well, that's very simple. We can actually be lazy and kind of cheat the system and use a lot size calculator. There are many out there. I like this one on my FX book. And you simply type in how many pips you want to risk, how much money is in your trading account, and it will tell you exactly how big your trade should be. What is leverage? Leverage is money that you borrow from your broker to open trades. The smallest possible trade that you can open with a broker is 0.01 lots, and this is equivalent to $1,000. Meaning to open this trade without using any leverage, you would need $1,000 in your account. And the maximum you could really make off this trade is one or two or maybe three or four dollars. So in order to make a lot of money and make a living without any leverage, you would need to be risking and trading with millions of dollars. And to get around this, Forex brokers build leverage into the account. Leverage is seen as a ratio style number, like one to 10. And leverage will vary from around one to 10 all the way through to one to 1,000, which is pure insanity. One to 10 leverage means you can take trades with 10 times the buying power of your trading account. One to 100 means you can take trades with 100 times the buying power. 
In my opinion, there's no reason to really ever go above 1 to 50 leverage, as all that you're able to do with huge leverage like 1 to 200, 1 to 500, or 1 to 1000 is risk way more money than you're supposed to, which, if you're following risk management, which is essential to win, is absolutely pointless and you never want to do it. 1 to 20, 1 to 30, and 1 to 50 is the perfect amount of leverage to use. And don't worry, leverage isn't a line of credit. There's no interest, loans, or penalties for using it. It's simply a natural tool that's built into every Forex account. And if a broker thinks you're going to lose all your money, they will just close your trades automatically, so you won't end up in debt with them. So don't be scared off by leverage. It's a useful tool, and it's practically essential for Forex trading. What is margin? When you invest money in a trading account, that money is used as margin. So if you put $10,000 into a trading account with 1 to 30 leverage, you'll have $300,000 worth of buying power, meaning you could open up to three lots, but your margin will be $10,000. So the broker would not let a loss exceed $10,000. If they thought that was going to happen, they would give you a margin call. This is a notification telling you to put more money into your trading account, or they're going to start closing your positions. But as I say, you never want to get into this position. Your goal should be to never see a margin call in your entire trading career. The only way you see a margin call is if you do something stupid and risk and lose all your money. So stick to risk management and you'll have no problem. So now that you understand brokers, you need to set up a trading account. You have two options, demo or live. To begin with, you might want to use a demo account. This is a practice account with fake money. So you can't make money, but you can't lose money either. You can trade as if you're trading with real money and learn the skill without risking anything. A live account is a real money account. This is where you risk real money to make real money in the markets. When you're profitable on demo, you can transition into a live account. Just head to the broker's website and set up your demo or live account, and then you'll nearly be ready to trade. But when you open a broker account, you can't actually execute trades on the broker's website. You need a trading platform. For this, I suggest you use MetaTrader 5. So what you want to do is go to the app store on your phone, type in MetaTrader 5, download that, open up the app, and then you'll be able to log into your trading account using the account credentials you got when you made an account with your broker. And just like that, you have an active account to start trading with. Different market orders. Now you have your trading account set up, there are five different ways that you can actually get into a trade. First of all is a market execution. This is a trade where you simply click the buy or sell button and you're immediately triggered into the market. This is a super common way to get into trades and it's the only way to immediately enter a trade. The second is a buy limit. A buy limit is an order that will trigger a buy trade if price falls to that level. So if price is here and your buy limit is here, if the market comes down to this level, you'll be triggered into a buy and if the market reverses, you will then make profit. The third type of order is a buy stop. This order is placed above price and if the market pushes up to this level, it will trigger into a buy. Then if the market keeps going, you profit. The fourth and fifth orders are the same, but the sell version. So a sell limit and a sell stop. A sell limit is placed above price and if price gets up to here, that will trigger you into a sell. A sell stop is placed below price and if the market falls through that level, it will trigger. And if it continues moving, you will profit. These different entry orders have different uses in the real market. You might not use all of them yourself, or you might, but you'll see how a couple of these work when we do the live examples in a bit. What is a stop loss? A stop loss is another kind of order, and these ones are really important. You want to have these on every trade. Remember before I said you can't win every trade and you're going to want to cut your losers as fast as possible? Well, that's what a stop loss is. It's an order that will automatically close your trade at a loss if the market gets to that price level. A stop loss is great to have on every trade as it will automatically get you out and it means you don't have to sit and stare at the chart while you're running a position. You need a stop loss on every trade to adhere to risk management. Don't forget that. What's a take profit? Well, a take profit is the opposite of a stop loss. Here's an example. Your entry is here, your stop loss is here, and your take profit is here. If price goes down to the stop loss, you'll be closed out for a $1,000 loss. If price goes up to here, you'll be closed out for $5,000 in profit. Using stop loss and take profit orders is how we do that risk management and ensure we win long term. We can set the take profits to close our trades when they work out, and we can set the stop losses to close our trades when they don't work out so we don't take a big loss. And when we're setting our stop loss and our take profit, we want to use a strategy called risk versus reward. This simply means looking to win more on winning trades than we lose on losing trades. So you might have your stop loss $1,000 away, but your take profit would be $3,000 or $4,000 away from where we are. That way, if the trade works, you're going to make three or four times what you lose when a trade goes bad. So then going back to the example, if you take 10 trades, you win five and lose five, you're going to lose $5,000 across the five losses, but you'll win $15,000 or more across the five wins, therefore leaving you with a net profit of around $10,000 or more. 
So how much money do you need to trade with? To make a living from trading, you need upwards of $50,000 or $100,000. Generally, the more the better. And for most people, getting this kind of money together is literally impossible. But this is where prop firms come in. So what is a prop firm? Well, a prop firm is a company that will give you access to $100,000, $200,000, $500,000, or maybe even $1 million to trade with if you can prove you can trade. You go through an evaluation process where you trade with fake money and you just have to make a small profit without breaking drawdown limits. If you can do this, they will give you the account and then you can trade $100,000 or more and keep 80 to 90% of the profits that you make. Getting involved with prop firms is super cheap. It will cost you around $400 to $500 to get access to a $100,000 account. And this makes it one of the biggest opportunities in modern trading. Prop firms are what many of my students have used to start making $10,000 per month and even more because you don't need a lot of money to invest and you don't have to risk your own capital to make five figure returns. If you wanna learn more about prop firms and the opportunities they provide, click the 10K per month link in the description and that's gonna take you to a video explaining this opportunity and how you can leverage it to build a career. So now you understand the basics of trading and you've got your broker account and trading account set up. The last thing you're going to need is a chart software. For this, there's no competition. TradingView is the best by far. Go to tradingview.com and set up an account. This is the platform you'll use to analyze charts, do technical analysis, and actually find your trade setups. We're coming back to this in literally one minute to break down some live trades. But first, trading psychology. Believe it or not, psychology is incredibly important towards your trading success. Trading is about building a set of rules and then following that set of rules to continually pull money out of the markets. But the problem is, in a game like trading, where we can lose or make thousands of dollars in just a matter of minutes, Emotions run wild, and it's easy to get led into bad decisions by the stress or excitement of winning or losing thousands of dollars very quickly. Let me ask you this. Have you ever made $5,000 in five minutes? For most of you, the answer will be no, but you can probably imagine how that might make you feel. It can make you feel invincible, and then you start getting cocky and greedy, and this leads you to make bad decisions because you feel untouchable. In many cases, traders will make $5,000 and then lose it just as quickly. Likewise, have you ever lost $1,000 in one minute? Hopefully not. But entering the world of trading, this will become the norm, even if you're trading with someone else's money. And this loss can cause you to get angry and frustrated and try and get that money back, which leads to, once again, bad decisions and bigger losses. And these bad decisions made as a result of poor psychology are the downfall of 90% of traders. See, once you master a trading system, there's really not a whole lot more to learn. The only thing you need to do from that point is master your mind. The traders who do master their mind end up winning, but the traders who don't are doomed to fail forever. Never underestimate the importance of a calm and controlled mind when you're trading. And I've got a bunch of videos on my YouTube channel that can teach you all about trading psychology. There's even a playlist called Psychology. So head over there and watch some of those after this video so that you can start thinking like a professional trader. All right, now I'm gonna start running you through some live trades that I took in the Forex markets. I sent all of these trades to my community. I called them in real time and I took them myself. So these are real trades that you can learn from. And I'm going to break them down in a simple manner so that you can start learning from some of the strategies that I use. So I trade in a very simple way. It stops confusion and it just makes life a lot easier. And I'm going to show you two concepts that you can use right now that are really easy to understand, but can bring you some really good profits. And I'm going to show you a real trade example that I took with my team and locked in for a nice profit. So just to explain real quick, this is a chart. And this is the kind of chart that you will be doing technical analysis on. It's called a Japanese candle chart. And each of these blocks you see, these blue and gray blocks, are called Japanese candlesticks. A candlestick shows a range of price movement within a given time frame. So look over to the top left here. We have weekly, daily, four hour, one hour, 30 minute, 10 minute, and two minute. Depending on which of these time frames we are looking at depends on how much price action we're looking at. So for this four hour time frame, each one of these candlesticks is showing four hours of price movement. The gray candles show bearish price action or falling price and the blue candles show bullish price action where the market has been going up. So now that you understand that, the first thing I'm going to do when I'm looking for a trade is identify the direction of the trend. And we do that by looking for higher highs and higher lows or lower lows and lower highs in a market. So in this example, we have the low just here. We had a push up to this level. Then we pulled back to this level. We pushed up to this level and now we're pulling back and we haven't yet broken this low just here. So what we've got, is a higher high, higher low, higher high. It's quite obvious from this that the market is moving up, which is what we want to see, because now we know we can look for buying opportunities. Now, the second thing I look for is supply and demand. Supply and demand is a very simple but very effective concept. 
And all we're doing when we're looking for supply and demand zones is looking for an area where the market has moved sideways before a big up move or sideways before a big down move. So the sideways price action before a big up move is a demand zone. This is where demand has come into the market. And basically what that means is this is a level that traders bought at previously, which caused a big upward move in the market. So here we can see sideways, big up move. This is a demand zone. For an example of a supply zone, we have this small sideways bit of movement before this big down move. So this would be a supply zone. So we know that demand zones are good levels to buy from. We also know that the market is moving up at this point in time. So if the market can get back to this demand zone, this would become an attractive level for me to buy from because we have a market that's moving up and now we've identified a good level to buy from to continue moving up with the market. So what I do at this point is go to a lower time frame. And for this trade example, I'm going to go all the way down to the five minute. So now the market has come all the way down and traded into the demand zone. And we're looking at the five minute at this point. Now, what you'll notice by looking at the five minute here is that we have a new trend. So we know the high time frame trend, the four hour trend was up. But down here, we can actually see that the market is instead forming lower lows and lower highs. So it's actually in a downtrend. Now, one of the safest ways to get into trades is to wait for the low time frame and the high time frame trends to agree. So the four hour trend is up. The demand zone is suggesting I should look to buy. But instead of just buying immediately at the demand zone, we can make sure this low time frame agrees with us by looking for something that we call a break of structure. So a break of structure is simply a name that we give to a trend reversal. So if we know a downtrend is indicated by lower lows and lower highs, and an uptrend is indicated by higher highs and higher lows, well then to get a break of structure or a reversal in the trend, what we're looking for is for the market to break the downtrend here by making a higher high. The moment the market makes this higher high, that tells us that the market is no longer moving down. The market has reversed and is likely to continue moving up in a new phase of higher highs and higher lows. So in this example, the break of structure would come at this level if the market managed to push above. And as we can see, the market has indeed gone and pushed above that level. So now we've started a new uptrend. Now, because we know this is a high interest area to buy from, seeing this new bullish move indicates that we might be in for a really nice trade. So what I would do here is very simply use the same demand concept to mark out that sideways area before the big upward move. And then I would place my buy trade here using a buy limit. And then we would put a stop loss below this low. So now our trade is beginning to be set up, but there's one more thing we need, and that's a target. We need to make sure that we can win more on this trade than we're risking. So if I risk $1,000 over this price move here, I need to be looking to make two, three, or $4,000 or more on the way up. So I've just jumped back to the four hour to find an easy target. High time frames have less noise, less candles, so they're easier to work with. And we can actually use a very simple rule of using supply and demand once again, but this time for targets. So for this trade example, we would look for a supply zone. What's a supply zone? Well, it's a sideways price action area before a big down move. Just here we can see there's a supply zone nearby, so we could use this as our target. Now we would be expecting the market to push from where it is, up to this level following that new change in the low time frame trend so we can go back down to the low time frame here and we can pull our target all the way up towards this area this would make for 5.4 times our risk so if we risk a thousand dollars on this trade we will make 5400 in an event that the trade wins so with our buy limit stop loss and take profit placed we can now go and do whatever we want and the market will work for us in the background you can see that this really doesn't take a lot of time. And as soon as the trade's executed, we can do whatever we want with our time and the market is going to work for us. And our trade position is going to make money for us, regardless of how we spend our day. This is where we get so much freedom as successful traders. So as you can see, the buy limit is now triggered and the market starts to push to the upside. Now, if we give this trade a little bit of time, we'll come back in a moment and we'll see how it worked out. So now coming back to this position, you can see that the trade is completed. We traded towards the supply area. The target is filled. And if you check the balance at the bottom, we've made $5,410. Now for transparency, this is a simulated account because I'm showing you a recap of a trade I took previously. But here's the trade that I took in real time, which actually did make me over $5,000. And here's a couple more trades that I took recently. This one made me over $2,000 in just a few minutes of work. This one made me $6,000 in a day. And this one actually made me $11,000 overnight. And all of these trades use this simple price action approach. And this strategy has brought people huge results. So that's all for this video. 
And if you want to learn more about my strategy that gets me results like this, this, and this, and allows beginner traders to get started making profits like this, this, and this in just a few months with one to two hours per day of work, then click the top link in the description. That's going to take you to a video showing you how to use my strategy and leverage the opportunity of prop firms to start making your first one to three thousand dollars per week trading so thanks for watching this video all the way through to the end drop a like make sure you subscribe so you can get all of my future educational videos and check out what my channel has to offer that's all from me i'll see you in the next one